hello, hello, it's John. And Richard. Bronze of Modern Gods here on your screen, whether it's your flat screen in the living room or your phone or on a podcast somewhere while you're supposed to be working. Don't feel guilty. We won't tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> hey, Richard. <laughs> hey, John. Are you following us on Facebook and Instagram? If not, please do at Bronze of Modern Gods. And if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Tell a friend, tell an enemy, tell your mom. <laughs> I say the same thing all the time, I know. And don't forget, you can also reach out to us at bronzeandmoderngods at gmail.com. John is up and reading those emails at three in the morning to make sure that we are in contact with you, our loyal followers. I hate timestamps on emails. I, need, <laughs> I forward them to Richard at like, well, you know, odd hours and we're three time zones apart, so it really gets crazy, but uh, blah, 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 blah. Hey, uh, we've got our, our regular features, little show and tell. We've got underrated books of the week. We've got the 25 year rule this week. But first, before we hit the viewer mailbag and everything else, it's our hot book of the week. Richard, you our picked it. Yeah, I picked this one. This one, I picked this obviously because of the recent release of the Flash movie. It's showcase number four from 1956, the first appearance of Barry Allen as the Flash. It's also the official start of the Silver Age of comics, which I think is really cool. This book is hard to come by. Uh, it's also pretty darn expensive. Uh, great. I, a 1.0, uh, I'm reading GPA prices, sold last for four, $4,532 this past month. For a 1.0. For a 1.0. The, the highest that sold recently was 132000 this month for an 8.0. So That seems low. It's uh, regardless, it's an expensive book. There's only 574 in the census with uh, the highest grade being a lowly uh, 9.6. So how did that happen? I have no idea. It, it may have been one of these uh, promise collection types of um, um, prestige books, but yeah, that's that's amazing. Oh, so it's a uh, air quote 9.6 if it's a promise collection. <laughs> yeah, you know, at, at that level for this book, and you and you have to think that CGC is thinking not only about the grade, but also about the, you know, the PR that comes about a high grade for the book. So, so you picked this because of the movie, I'm assuming. Correct. Have you seen it? I have not. And it's getting a little trounced in the theaters, according to the box office reports, it's underperforming. You know, the so as part of that has to do with, you know, some of the controversy surrounding uh, Ezra Miller. And, uh, you know, some of it may just be, you know, I think the, the whole superhero fatigue, uh, may be setting in, um, you know, there's only so many superhero movies you can have in a year and actually I mean, not for me, but for the general population. So, you know, I think the two combinations could be, could be a problem. Although, uh, you know, mutual friend, uh, Evan has said that this movie is excellent. Of course, he's also biased. He's a big DC fan. So yeah. have you seen it? I have not. Uh, I also have to wonder if a lot of it, you know, we're talking about civilians out there, the, uh -huh. the general public. Why am I going to pay 15 bucks to see something that I used to see on the CW every week for free? Uh, you know, we, we know it's not the same flash. We know it's different. We know it's, uh, but we're really entrenched, trenched in that geek culture. And, you know, a lot of drive by people are not. So I have to wonder if that's a little part of it. Do you think the CW has actually negatively affected the um, the DCEU? That that would be. I've always thought of the CW as you know comic book movies on training wheels or comic book shows on training wheels. It's always been more, um, dr you know, drama show than comic book action. Um, yeah, but you're Joe Schmo. You're Joe Six Pack. You don't know. Uh, from the flash from the flash you just know it was a tv show on the cw i'm not going to yeah. see that soap opera which yeah. you know that's what you're saying it was basically a soap opera with costumes and now here it is on the big screen i don't know uh, i i know the tv shows aren't as entwined with the cinematic universe as marvels were i mean the beginning agents of shield was right in there with civil right. war uh, you know, uh, Thanos and Infinity Gauntlet stuff. And, you know, then it kind of went off in its own way. Um, and even Inhumans was somewhat tied in. 
uh-huh. uh, the TV show. So I don't know. It's just a thought I have. Yeah, it's a good thought. I I, I wish I knew. And I, I, I wish the movie well, as I wish all superhero movies well, because I wanted the genre to continue. Um, but I have not really felt, you know, like I, I, I had to make plans to go see this movie. It's a movie wow. that of convenience, you know, Evan's going to kill me because I, I'm, I'm not going out seeing it so he can talk to me about it. But, you know, it's I rushed out and saw Spider-Verse. <laughs> you, you barely got out of your chair for Black Adam, one of your favorite yeah. characters. Yeah, seriously. You know, it's it's um, um, we'll see. I, again, I wish the movie well. I have no, you know, Ezra Miller is you got to separate the actor from the from the performance. So I, I hope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's really yeah. gross sorry. yeah he is really gross you know i, I, I I'm sorry they are really gross <laughs> uh i also yeah it's 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 something that i think has has left a black eye on the movie you know his his involvement in it um but um i like how you say i wish you well movie like it's going off to war <laughs> Uh, I love you, Richard. (laughs) All right. Uh, Usually right here, we had a new feature that we talk uh, and show off our books and a little show and tell. But before we get started with the show and tell, Richard, there is something going on that I think we need to let the comic book community know about. (laughs) I don't know. I feel kind of gross saying the comic book community. I don't know why, but it is a comic book community. It is. It Um, is. I don't want anybody to mistaken mistake me for an influencer. Um, the uh, there is a thread in the CGC forums. If you guys have not visited the CGC forums uh, lately, or if ever, check it out. There are some sales threads in there. Richard and I scoop up some decent bargains every now and then in the sales threads. Lots of discussion. It's kind of like a an old school uh, Reddit for old school comic collectors. I, I think it of as the last BBS. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I, I, every time I log in, I, I they have updated it, to be fair. But every time I log in, I think I, I'm like logging into AOL. I'm here, <laughs> um, but there is a restoration nightmare thread going on in there. What would you do if you sent a restoration company your highly expensive comic books to be restored. And then you didn't hear from them for months and months. And when you ask for your books to be returned and you want a refund, you get excuse after excuse or just non-response. I'd be like insane right now. That's allegedly what's been happening to collectors who trusted a company called Hero Restoration with their comics. And this is all according to a thread in the CGC boards. Uh, People in that thread are sharing that they have books like Amazing Fantasy 15 that they sent to this company that have allegedly been with Hero Restoration for years, not months, not weeks, but for years waiting to be restored. Mm -hmm. Hero Restoration has been slow to reply to all the queries, if they reply at all. Uh, People in the thread are saying they're being told no refunds. So no books, no refunds. Um, The owner of Hero Restoration Let's give the other side of the story. He's jumped into that thread on the CGC forums and he's tried to explain what's happening. Here's what he says. Basically, the business grew too quickly. Uh, During the boom, he hired a bunch of people. He expanded too fast. Then he had to lay off all of his staff. And then the stress of the business going under uh, caused him to have a heart attack, poor guy. Uh, That's not good for anyone. However, heart attack, hard times, what's stopping you from sending the books back to people? You, yeah, you know. I, yeah, I think at this point, people would gladly accept the books and worry about being refunded later. It's, it's some of these books, at least from the, from the thread, are people's personal collections and things uh, that they've had for 40 plus years. So there's sentimental values to this book, you know, it's, and, and, this person having uh, those books allegedly at this point um, is causing them stress. And, uh, and I think the, the fair thing would be for this person to settle this before, before dissolving the company. People 
have offered in the thread to pay for shipping on his behalf in order to get the books returned to these people that are, are waiting for them. He hasn't replied to those offers uh, or hasn't uh, followed up on those offers. And then he points to his terms and conditions that apparently you have to agree to before you send the books to him, which you have to pay in advance. Uh -huh. Richard, would you ever pay a contractor in advance for any service ever in your life? No, no. The, 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 I would potentially pay a down payment. Sure. Deposit. That final, deposit. That final payment is the incentive for the contractor to get the job done. Without that incentive, some people will slack on the job or in some case not do it at all. Imagine you putting a pool in your backyard. Let's pretend you're rich. You're, you're your uncle screwed. You're going to spend some money. The contractor shows up and says, give me 25 K right now before I start on this pool. No, get out of my house, <laughs> get out of my backyard. No. Uh, so there's a few lessons here for everyone. First of all, before you send any books to this person, go read the thread. The link is in the description then judge for yourself, do your due diligence first. We're not saying all these things are true or not. We're just saying this is the discussion that's happening right now. Be careful, uh, protect yourself. And, you, you know, restoration is one thing, but people will also use this company to press their books. People buy your own press and learn how to press. I don't know how many times we can say it. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it takes some practice like anything you know of you know of a higher standard but once you get practice you can press your books yourselves on your own schedule the book never leaves your house or and um you know the output is to your standards so now as john said restoration is a different thing a, a restoration yeah. removal let's say is a different story because oh, we store your own books please yeah <laughs> please don't. um you know that's a different process but for for this the simple fact of pressing and cleaning a book i think it's something that i have confidence you in you to be able to do it plenty of resources out there to train yourself uh, i always talk about captain mike's book uh i also we have a video called comic book pressing 101 on this channel that people seem to uh enjoy and learn from and uh you know to all the people that are waiting for their books to be returned and that are caught up in this, I feel for you. I, I know I shouldn't feel for the guy behind hero restoration. If any of this is true, but you know, empathy, there's a bit of empathy. Yeah. It sounds like he really got himself in over his head and he doesn't know what to do. I, I can't gotta, imagine this was the outcome that he wanted for this, but, but you gotta make it right. You can't, you can't ignore people. You can't, uh, it's uh, Susie Orman time, uh, people in debt that don't want to face their debt and they, they, they put it off and they don't open bills and they don't want to create a spreadsheet that has all their debts laid out. They don't want to deal with it. That's what this reminds me of. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 as John says, I hope everyone who has books in this gets restitution or gets their books back. Um, it's, it's the fair thing to do. Um, and I hope that uh, I hope that comes true. Fingers crossed, everybody's made whole from this. Uh, let's lighten it up with some <laughs> show and tell. Uh, I can go first. Okay. Um, show and tell just what it says on the tin. We're gonna show some books we got this week and tell you about them. Richard, are you ready for some rugged action? Nice. Rugged action issue two from Atlas Comics. Um, this, I've, I never really noticed this until the last few years in the fifties, Atlas had a bunch of blank action books that were all branded the same way with action kind of like, you know, uh, in that font swishing, there mm -hmm. was sport action, sports action, rugged action. I think there was like battlefield action or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm, I'm after all the action. <laughs> Atlas, like I needed yet another focus, and I see it's yet another another uh, all black cover. Just to yes, use. it's got a chip, big chunk out here. I think I paid twenty bucks for this. Um, you know, it's not. It looks good in a mylar. Let's put it that way. <laughs> a great Joe Manili cover with several mm -hmm. different rugged action uh, things happening there. Uh, I bought a book last summer. 
uh, when we were down in North Carolina. Um, and I finally got it slab. It is Silver Surfer. <sighs> it came back a 5.5. Five. Yeah. Am yeah. I remembering you paid $200 for that book? Yes, I did. Exactly. Oh. We it was you. sitting on it was sitting on the shelf um the um i looked at it and i saw it at a price i, I asked the woman what the price on it was because it didn't have a price on it and she said two hundred dollars and i'm thinking is it restored is you know is there something wrong with it to indicate that so i asked to see it and i looked at it and there is around one of the staples what looks you know it's 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 discoloration uh, okay but I, but I thought it might have been like marker because mm -hmm. so you know it's an all black cover so it's it's tough um so i originally was gonna gonna poo poo it and then i was in the bookstore and i was looking at other books and then i said for 200 dollars, i'm gonna take the chance on right. on uh, being and and i and i so i i bought it immediately after i bought it the owner of the store comes out and asks what happened to that silver surfer that was on the wall and the, and the woman said, as I'm walking out the door, oh, I sold it for $200. So I think it, I think it may have been mismarked. Was there a Richard shaped <laughs> hole in the door, like on Looney Tunes? <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's, it's uh, off white to white pages. Um, really great looking book. Uh, it's these, these square bound books. I pressed it obviously, uh, are tough to press correctly, you know, to get them flat, flat. So I think if I had spent another two or three presses, I may have gotten a six, but I'm happy with the five. five. They're, they're tough. They're, they're, it takes a, a, a little bit of finessing to press yeah. a square bound. Uh, my next show and tell is interesting. Uh, Jack Kirby left Marvel in 1970, went over to DC for a five-year contract. The contract ended in 1975, and then he came back to Marvel. One of the first covers one of the first assignments he had coming back to Marvel, uh, they just loaded him up with covers. It was like, the king is back. Do all these covers. From November, cover dated November 1975, is one of the first Jack Kirby covers when he returned to Marvel. Kazar number 12. Oh, okay. Now, I'm first, I'm, first of all, beautiful uh, Ramita inks on this. I love the combo of Jack and John Ramita. Love that combo. And at first I was like, why did they have Jack Kirby draw a Kazar cover for one of his first assignments when he returned to Marvel? And then it kind of hit me. Who does he look like on this cover? <laughs> like Commandy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Commandy was a big seller mm -hmm. in the seventies for DC when Jack was doing it. It was probably his most successful book at dc mm -hmm. and this is like i could see someone stan or roy thomas or someone in editorial going can you draw this and you know you know he also he drew the first kazar solo story in amazing adventures the first two issues were by mm -hmm. jack kirby so he has it of course he reintroduced him in x-men number 10 mm -hmm. so he has a history with the character but uh that occurred to yeah that occurred to me that <laughs> oh they thought let's make him look like commandy or something Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like Commandy. You only had one book for show and tell this week, right? Right. Okay, here's my last one for this week. Speaking of Atlas in action, it is Men in Action. <laughs> Boy, these people just don't sit down, do they? They're always in action. No, it's a 4.0. It is Men in Action number three from Atlas, a uh, cover dated June 1952. Uh, and you know, uh, not quite the men in action. I thought it was going to be <laughs> well, I'll take it. and a politically incorrect cover as I can, of say. course, of course. Uh, and look at the, uh, the blood on the bayonet, by the way. Nice yeah. Time. Wow. Yeah. Nice yeah. That's something would not get through nowadays. Detail there. Uh, what's interesting about this book is that it is a really cool war cover. I believe. It is Russ Heath. It sure is. I love me some Russ Heath art. Mm -hmm. So a uh, really early Atlas uh, war book. And just, I can't resist him when I see him. I got to pick him up. No, so don't blame me. It's a great cover. There it is. Moving on from show and tell to everyone's favorite topic, viewer mail. You've got mail. I can start. First one is from our Bronze and Modern Gods Gmail from our friend Ron Gilbert. 
who wrote to us at bronze and modern gods at gmail.com. Hi guys, love the show. I met Jack Kirby in a 1970s San Francisco Bay Area Comic Con. Nice. And he signed two of my comic books while I watched. Really exciting. Kirby signed on the first page in ballpoint pen, old school style. In 2022, I sent these signed comics to CPCS. My commandy number one, <laughs> my eternals number one signatures were both unverified by CPCS. So it does happen as we talked about yeah. a few weeks ago, we were wondering if they ever unverify. They put a blue label on them and on the label they put Jack Kirby signature on first page, unverifiable. <laughs> okay. So CBCS unverifiable does happen on real signatures. The CBCS rating for my command E1 was an 8.5 and I thought it might be higher, but I am an amateur grader. My Eternals number one came back a 9.2 and I thought it was a 9.4. That's splitting hairs there, uh, Rob. You, your grading seems to be on. Yeah. Uh, the unverified signature was listed in the grading notes and may have impacted the grades. Huh? that's probably uh, a possibility uh rob interesting thanks for sharing keep grading and comparing uh the also the also keep in mind cgc grading is slightly different than cbcs people tend to think cbcs hammers a little bit more than cgc although <laughs> if you want to get knocked down to a nine six or a nine four because of light finger bends on your moderns shoot them over to cgc yep they'll take care of you yeah, uh, you Which, know, I'm I'm surprised. Uh, the why was it unverifiable? There are there are samples of Jack Kirby's signature. I've he got did Jack Kirby he, signature in a picture over here. Yeah, Rob did go on. I edited it a bit. Uh, <laughs> there's possibilities of you know they thought it was Roz signing it because his wife Roz used to sign for him a lot. Okay, uh, he was rushed. You know, and it didn't look like the normal Jack Kirby signature. Plenty of reasons why they could not. Okay, one hundred percent stand behind it, so it's possible. It makes sense. What's your first piece of your mail? My first piece is from bronzeandmodergods at gmail.com from Tom May. Tommy. Hey Tom. Hey John and Richard. What's the best way to avoid spine creases from occurring when shipping multiple comics at the same time? Mm. For the past few months, any order shipment of more than one comic I've gotten from either a single trusted seller on eBay are from multiple major stores like a uh, mile high have a, uh, has arrived with at least one of the books having a noticeable spine crease. It doesn't matter if they shipped securely in Gemini mailers with the first two comics facing each other. So their spines don't overlap or if they are packaged equally carefully, it be, it's becoming a serious frustration. Do either of you experience this uh, situation when ordering multiple comics from someone online? I've never seen anyone complain about this problem when getting their books graded. I'm genuinely curious of, curious about how people constantly submit multiple books at the same time to CGC or other grading uh, companies, and those books come back in pristine condition. Regards, Tom May. Uh, boy, um, I have shipped a lot of books to CGC. Uh, if you're talking about sending books out, um, I did a tw I did a 32 book um shipment to them last year I haven't done a shipment that big recently and i did as you mentioned stacking the books um uh, so their spines you know up you're, they're facing each other so their spines are opposite um but i also put each book i put a you know you've got the backing board in the back you can also put a backing board in the front uh to protect the book on the front as well yeah. you know that's one way of of being, you know, extra cautious, but, you know, I've got a lot of books in multiple books from, you know, I get books from, uh, TFAW, um, um, and I don't have a problem with them. So John, have you had a problem with, with spine, spine issues with receiving books? No, Tom, I have to ask if they're coming in Gemini mailers, is the mailer bent? Is the package bent in any way? Because what it sounds like to me is that the spine ticks were there. Uh, to begin with, and it uh, has nothing to do with the books being packed with other books. I will say there's a danger in putting seven or more books yeah. in a single Gemini mailer. That's when you're really flirting with overstuffing it and having things get bent. Uh, that might also be an issue. People trying to overstuff when I sell um, multiple books to people, 
if they have over seven books, I won't ship it in a Gemini mailer. I'll, sh I'll break it into two Gemini mailers and put it in a priority box. Yeah. Uh, that, that's and, what I did with my big 32 books shipment. I had two priority boxes that I shipped them in. I just had a 27 book shipment go out to CGC this week and I used the big CGC box. I just, <laughs> I just stuffed it full of uh, cardboard dividers. Uh, and one thing I do is I'll put multiple books in a magazine bag and seal it to keep them from bouncing around. Okay. Uh, but Tom, I, I have to wonder if the, the spine ticks weren't there in the first place. And, uh, and because if the mailer's not being bent, then there's no reason for them to have spine ticks unless they were there. So there you go. Let us know, Tom. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about your books. Yeah, really. What'd you get? My next piece of viewer mail is from our Gmail at bronzeandmoderngods at gmail.com from Stuart Langdown. Another Aussie. We've got so many Aussies that listen to this podcast. I love that, it. That is awesome. I love I, it. Too. I want to go to Brisbane. I want to go to Melbourne. I want to go to Sydney. It's just, I, you know, yeah. the other end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go too. It's the 24 hour plane flight that, that stops yeah. me <laughs> in coach. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, and I know you want to go down there and find a, a fantastic floor number five. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Australian edition. Uh, hi, John and Richard. Thanks for a great YouTube channel. Well, thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Currently watching the latest episodes and going back and watching the old ones. Oh, uh, really enjoyed the Jim Shooter and Paul Levitt's interviews. Any show that has an old fart rule has to be a good one. <laughs> My wife and I ran an LCS in Australia for over 30 years, but about seven years ago, it was time to sell. We still sell back issues on eBay with, new own, with the new owner's blessing. However, my personal collection has been neglected over the last three years due to the pandemic and a loss of energy on my part. Since the 1980s, I have collected number ones, 1960s to 2000, and Star Trek and Gold Key slash Dell Comics original series. Okay. Thanks to your videos, you reminded me of the joy of collecting. Last weekend, my wife and I did the 600 kilometer round trip to Sydney's Supernova Convention. Oh, we awesome. should go back. Oh, go. yeah. Let's have an excuse to go. Can someone from Sydney Supernova please invite us and pay? Yes, please. We'll, we'll live stream in your time zone, we promise. Absolutely. Um, the first comic I bought for $2 was Gem Son of Saturn number one. Congratulations, Stuart. Between us, I think we have cornered the global market. Keep the fun going. Regards, Stu. All AKA Star Trek and comics are great. His YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, please yeah. enjoy. Oh, P.S. I enjoy the channeling of Susie Orman, who I have read along with many similar Aussie authors. Susie forever. Stu, <laughs> I hear you about getting birds out. I had a store. Richard will tell you when I closed that store and sold it, I didn't touch a comic book for years. I didn't want anything to do with them. It was like hot potato. No, no, no. Uh, so now I'm glad to hear that you are enjoying the hobby again. And thank you very much for your email. And please convince those convention organizers in Sydney to pay for us. to come. <laughs> Yep. Oh, we, we would love to come down there and drink a Foster's with you. Ah, yes. I, and we won't, we won't make any references to Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> we won't say shrimp on the Barbie. We won't do it. You know, I may geek out on In Excess's first three albums because they're classics. Um, I may geek out on Kath and Kim a little bit because it's one of the best sitcoms ever made globally, <laughs> ever. Uh, okay, go ahead, Richard. Um, my my last piece of, of your mail this week is from E Blanco 7605 and he says you definitely should do a bondage cover of the week i agree it's uh <laughs> for a couple of reasons um bondage is one of those areas uh one of those you know um areas of collection that is very popular uh there are there are a, a number of fans of bondage covers for you know in the past they have been more risque and less so nowadays, but it's it's definitely a subgenre of the hobby. And I think we have a very interesting dynamic, John. You <laughs> can look at the bondage covers like um, Doll Man, <laughs> and I look at the bondage covers on my side like Wonder Woman or Zoot, or there's a variety of others. You know, it's, I swear to God, it's not a hundred percent a kink thing with me. It's just <laughs> it's the history of closeted. Ness 
in the past where this was like one of the only ways you could get your jollies apparently when you were <laughs> a, a, a gay man in the 40s and it's that's what fascinates me because this is look at this cover it's insane <laughs> uh yeah and you said there's nothing in the story that has anything to do about no there's no no story inside that reflects this cover <laughs> by the way purchased from the golden age guru at san diego comic-con about four years ago <laughs> <laughs> thanks jeff <laughs> uh richard when did i have that store in the God, mid 90s 90s yeah yeah oh. was about 25 years ago more than 25 years ago, but that's close enough. It's the 25 year rule. <laughs> hey, a uh, 25 year rule is one segment of the show where we talk about books that tickled the nostalgia funny bone when it usually happens when you're a kid or you're your early teens. 25 years later, you want to recapture that time. So you rebuy those books. We're back 25 years to 1998 with a book called X-Men, the manga number one. Richard, did you know that there was an X-Men manga in Japan? I did not. That is something you new. Know, yeah. that Marvel reprinted them here in the US by about for about two years, starting in 1998. So who published them? Marvel gave them licensing rights Marvel, to publish them? Exactly. And then Marvel reprinted it here in the States. Uh, there was also Spider-Man the manga around the same time in 1998. Uh, the X-Men the manga is by Hiroshi Higuchi. It ran, like I said, for 26 issues till about uh, the middle of 1999. This book is not hard to get. It's not expensive, which is surprising to me. It is X-Men. It is manga. It's cool looking. It's a number one. It's also three to six dollars on eBay. Oh, wow. The most recent high grade slab sale was for a CGC 9.4 this month for a whopping twenty six dollars. Wow, that's that's incredible. Uh, maybe it's because it's a reprint. Uh, people yeah. are not valuing it higher, but that uh, that seems to be interesting. I, and I would love to read the Spider-Man one as well. Yeah, I think the Spider-Man manga sells for a little bit more of a premium because that character is part of the spider verse so right. right there's that crossover and people want that whereas this x-men manga is just kind of forgotten and ignored so a little interesting piece of marvel comics history moving on speaking of the x-men richard your underrated book of the week is an x-men title that i teased earlier yes you did uh, it's x-men number 10. uh this is the first appearance of kazar in the Silver Age. First appearance of Zabu, the saber-toothed tiger, his companion. Oh, Zabu. And the first appearance of the Savage Land. Then my question is, you know, why is this book so cheap? You know, it's, you know, it's an X, it's an X-Men in the first 10, right? Check. First appearance of an important character in Kazar, check. Possible MCU spec. We saw what appeared to be, we saw dinosaurs and what appeared to be the Savage Land and Doctor uh Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So why can I buy a, a CGC 5.5 of this book for 300 bucks or, or, or better because it was a better uh, $300 or better or best offer for this book up on eBay. And let's not forget one of the bigger uh, points about this book. It's X-Men number 10. Exactly. Exactly. If this was, yeah, yeah it's, it's just amazing how, uh, how affordable now, now the lower underrated books are affordable when you get to the higher end of the spectrum. Uh, for example, there's a nine, four, that was the most recent high grade sale. It went for 2850 last month, but even that is still, you know, reasonable. If you're if looking at, you know, the top 10 or the first 10 books of an important series like the X-Men. Yeah. I, it's, it's bewildering to me that this book can be had for under $500 in a 5.5, uh, you know, Kazar, yeah, always an also ran always a C lister had a nice run in the 70s there and then in the 80s again beautiful brent anderson art in that 80s series but even that one didn't sell and they had to go direct only uh after the first year and then the great mark wade andy kubert kazar series from the 2000s where kazar fights thanos yes. <laughs> hey all i have to say is deadpool i mean deadpool was a pretty crap character until uh until his transformation what 
He How was. dare you? <laughs> yeah, all I'm saying is you can take a character who doesn't ha who doesn't have any what seems to be for momentum, inject some life into that character from some means, and then watch them take off. So never, never, never um, give up on Kazar. I think he's a great a great character, and I think he deserves his own his own series at some point. Let's give Marvel credit for finally getting him out of the loincloth and getting some boots on him. And yeah, he's gotta be he's gotta be cold all the time, you know. Like those bare feet in the jungle, that's gotta be like calloused. <laughs> they gotta stink. Uh my underrated book this week is I think my first graphic novel yeah. slash trade paperback. And that is Why I Hate Saturn by Carl Kyle Baker. I said Carl Baker, Kyle Baker. Okay. Um, this is my well worn, well loved read over and over first print of why i hate saturn on piranha press uh, which was dc comics uh imprint for uh creator owned experimental books like this uh it was before vertigo uh, and it, this was like their big success piranha had a bunch of books like beautiful stories for ugly children and gregory did okay but this was the first one that got like rolling stone articles written about it oh, wow entertainment weekly covered it it is an excellent hilarious story about 20 something professionals trying to make it in new york city gosh that could be a sitcom about <laughs> a bunch of friends oh this one's slightly different. Uh, it also has a crazy family member who just happens to think that she's the queen of the leather Astro girls of Saturn, but you know, okay. I don't want to spoil this for you. Uh, it's a great time capsule of the early 1990s, right? With the turn of the decade from the eighties into the nineties and trying to make it as a writer or a creative person in New York city at that time before grunge hit Seattle. And shockingly, why I hate Saturn appears to be out of print which is a crime. Uh, it should be a federal crime. You should be arrested for not having this in print, Kyle Baker slash DC Comics, whoever owns the rights at this point. Why I Hate Saturn. Have you read it? If so, leave us a comment. Tell us what you thought. Probably haven't thought about that book in <laughs> more than 30 years, uh, but there it is. Go buy it now. Short and sweet this week. We wanted to get this one out to you guys to tell you about that breaking news. Uh, go check out that thread about hero restoration in the CGC forums. Let us know what you think. What would you do if you were in the situation? Richard, let's make everyone think positive thoughts this week. I mean, it's, it's easy to be cruel and negative, but let's try to stay positive about the hobby. Yes, yes. We're all in this hobby to have fun, right? Well, and make some money, but to have fun. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody. We will catch you next time. Everybody, stay safe.